not all ester molecules can undergo the clays and condensation reaction to produce beta keto ester products. Now to see what we mean, let's suppose we have the following ester molecule that contains only a single alpha hydrogen. Let's suppose this ester molecule tries to undergo the clays and condensation. So in step number one, we have the alkoxide base that deprotonates this alpha hydrogen off of our ester to produce the ester enolate molecule that is resonance stabilized. Now in the second step we have the addition reaction taking place in which these two electrons on the alpha carbon act as our nucleophile attacking our second ester molecule so forming a bond between the alpha carbon of one ester and this carbon of the second ester. So we kick off the pi bond placing the two electrons onto our oxygen and we form this tetrahedral intermediate. And in the third step we have the elimination reaction taking place in which the pi bond is reformed and we kick off our alkoxide leaving group to produce this intermediate, the beta keto ester intermediate. Now, recall in the regular clays and condensation, this is not the final product. To actually produce the final product, the beta keto ester, this intermediate must be deprotonated on our alpha carbon position to produce the resonance stabilized and ion intermediate and that molecule is then protonated to produce the final product the beta keto ester. Now in this reaction in this intermediate notice we have two R groups we no longer have any alpha hydrogens so this intermediate cannot undergo the fourth step in which we use the alkoxide base produced in this step that is kicked off to deprotonate this alpha carbon so we cannot deprotonate this and so the final reaction the final two steps will not take place so this is higher in energy and less stable than the initial reactants and so because this molecule cannot undergo any further step it can only go back in reverse and a reverse clays and condensation reaction will take place and will essentially we will essentially go back and reform our initial starting reaction our initial starting material in the following reaction mechanism so so in the reverse step we have our alkoxide that is kicked off now acts as the base or actually acts as our uh, nucleophile attacking this carbon displacing the pi bond placing the two electrons onto this oxygen to form this tetrahedral intermediate as we formed in this step. In the next step we have the a pi bond that is reformed but now we kick off this leaving group this bond is broken and these two electrons end up on this carbon to form the resonance stabilized ester enolate so we also form this molecule that is basically kicked off that we had in this step as shown so we basically reform this molecule as well as this molecule in the final step to go back to our initial starting material we have this acts as the base reacting with the alcohol deprotonating the alcohol to form our alkoxide this molecule as well as the initial starting material so basically we see in a reaction in which our ester does not have enough alpha hydrogens we cannot go on to form the final product the beta keto ester because this cannot be deprotonated at the alpha hydrogen position so because we don't have any more alpha hydrogens the the next two reactions cannot take place and because this is higher in energy than this our reaction the equilibrium will be 
basically shift to this side and so our reaction will go in reverse and this reverse reaction is known as the reverse Claisen condensation. So once again, esters that do not have enough alpha hydrogens cannot undergo the Claisen condensation to produce the final product, the beta keto ester. Instead, when the beta keto ester intermediate, this molecule is formed, it will go back in reverse to form the more stable and lower in energy starting material, our ester molecule. And this reaction going in reverse is simply known as the reverse Claisen condensation.